Welcome, folks. Thank you for joining us. We're so glad to welcome uh, Faiza Yusuf to, do, to talk to us about how to supercharge your personal growth journey. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to have all of you as well. I hope all of you are doing well. Uh, without any further delay, I would ask for Faiza to begin with her uh, session. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. So uh, my name is Faiza Yusuf, and um, I'm a technology professional based out here in Karachi, Pakistan. And um, uh, when the team at Agile India reached out to me and we were talking about some personal growth and uh, mindset related topics. So I wanted to, I, I told them about the work that I've been doing on myself to kind of improve uh, myself. And they were really interested in um, hearing about that. And they, they invited me to talk about this. So I'm really grateful uh, that they chose this topic. And I'm also really grateful that you all are here uh, listening to me. So uh, these are a few organizations that I'm associated with. So Code Girls and Women in Tech PK are the organizations that I have uh, founded. I'm extremely invested in the idea of diversity and inclusion. And uh, these are the two organizations around that. Most of, both of them work around gender inclusion uh, in Pakistan. Um, I work at Genetic Solutions as a senior product manager. CryptoChicks is an organization that I lead here in Pakistan. Um, it's an organization based out in Toronto and Upwork is where I go to find a lot of work. So I um, tend to work on a lot of uh, content creation, ed tech, product management related areas on Upwork and consult uh, for people there. So uh, goal setting is tricky. Um, the reason that I say that is because a lot of us have gone through the phase that uh, whenever new year comes, a lot of us set resolutions and then, you know, we are, we fail to follow through. And this is all of us, including myself, uh, because we tend to think that because it's new year, so it's important that we do that because everybody else is doing that. Uh, but goal setting is tricky because we need to not just think about what we want to achieve, but we also need to think about the system behind that. So the focus on system is extremely important. And these are the things that I'm, I'm going to discuss in our, um, in, in our discussion today. So goal setting, uh, in our mind, when we think about goal setting, we, we are thinking about motivation. We are thinking about transformation. We are thinking about change because personal growth is all about transformation. It is something that you do to improve yourself. And when I say yourself, I'm talking about your physical health, your mental health, your financial state, your intellectual state, your spiritual state, anything at all. So when we do goal setting, we are usually focusing on motivation. But what I want you to think about today is to focus on your behavior instead of motivation, and especially motivation that is not intrinsic. Because if the motivation is coming from inside, and you also know that this is something that you really, really want to do, and you really, really want to be, then this is something that's going to happen eventually over time. But if the motivation is coming from outside, in most cases, um, it will fizzle out. So um, I have had this conversation around habit forming and about personal growth with a lot of people that I work with. So my peers, colleagues, people that I've taught, people that have mentored me or I have mentored. And there are a bunch of questions that I've collected over the years that keep on coming back because people do tend to read about goal setting and do tend to read about habit forming. So I've created a list of questions that I'm going to show you right now. And then we are going to go through these questions and talk about, I'm going to talk about my answers. And then I would really, really want you to think about your answers for these, for these questions. So topmost questions, uh, question, should I time block? Um, what should be the size of my goal? Um, how should I quantify it? Do I have to do all of it daily? Because you are, we, I'm, I'm saying about, I'm talking about habits. So if it's a habit, do I need to do it daily? How soon should I self-reflect? Can I quit it in like two days? Do I need to do it for two weeks minimum? Do I have to spend 1000 hours on it? What am I going to do with that? What if my tiny habit is too tiny? So there is a wonderful book called Tiny Habits. I have mentioned that book at the end of my talk as well. And then another one, it's called Atomic Habits. So, um, so it talks about very, very small and simple behaviors. So in some, some people think that it's too tiny, too tiny for me. So I, I don't think that's substantial enough. Um, should I count on snowballing? So is it ever going to happen? Uh, snowballing. What if my goal is not worthy of my time? What if I'm doing something, but um, I think that this is not the right thing to do? 
Should I quit my goal in the middle? If yes, when is the right time? So these are the questions that keep coming back when it comes to um, talking about personal growth and when it comes to talking about goal setting and habit forming and ritual forming. So um, first of all, let, let me share my answers with you. So time blocking doesn't work for me. I cannot just say that at 9 a.m. from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. I'm going to do that because I um, I have a very, very chaotic kind of uh, uh, work structure because I work with multiple organizations and I do a lot of volunteering and I you know, run a household as well. So um, things tend to get um, really messy around that. So instead of time blocking, my focus is on setting an intention for the day and pick up at least three things that are extremely important for that day for me. And then I go from there. So instead of setting up a calendar time, I basically block the whole day for achieving three or four goals that I want to do that day. Uh, what should be the size of my goal? So it should be doable, but not boring at all. Uh, so in my case, I tend to kind of push myself a little bit further every year uh, to make sure that I'm 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 adding some excitement excitement to it. Um, the size of your goal should not be something that is impossible to achieve. You cannot uh, set a goal that I'm going to complete 100 courses in in a year's time, or maybe I'm going to um, learn five new skills in that in that year. Um, you can do that again, if but if you have a full time job, if you have children, if you have other people around you, that will become really difficult, and you will eventually burn out. So how should you quantify it? In some cases, I love to do habit tracking. In other cases, I do it by milestones. So um, for example, uh, a lot of my work involves writing and teaching and reading. So um, for, for, uh, for writing, I do habit tracking, but for reading, I do milestones. A lot of, for teaching also, I do a lot of milestones. For learning also, I also do, for learning, I do habit tracking. So I, I spend around 30, 40 minutes every day learning, learning something new, learning that is part of my goal for the year or for that quarter. So do I have to do it daily? It depends. In most cases, I don't. I use a tool called Asana. So um, I have set days for set things and it prompts uh, when the day comes. So I know that this is the day for that, that item that I want to do. Um, how soon should I self-reflect? For some cases, monthly works. For some cases, quarterly. I would not recommend you to self-reflect within a week. Uh, I would not recommend you self-reflect after a quarter because that's too much time. Uh, to spend on something that uh, um, that you may not do again. So um, self-reflection, I, I would, uh, minimum, I would recommend you to do it in like two weeks and then maximum maybe a month or in some cases a quarter will, will work. Um, if you think your tiny habit is too tiny, uh, that, that's my problem also. So I make it substantial. Uh, in case of um, learning, I don't do one lecture on one video, I will do 30 minutes. Uh, in case of reading, I won't do one page, I will do 20 minutes. In case of walking, I won't do um, 10 minutes, I will do 30 minutes or four kilometers or something like that. So I will make it substantial and this is why, this this, this is what makes it exciting for me. Uh, should I count on snowballing? Yes, absolutely. It works, it works beautifully. Uh, what if my goal is not worthy of my time? You pivot. Absolutely. There's no shame in that. Consider it as an experiment. You experimented on it. It did not work out. Go ahead. Change it. Um, should you quit? Uh, of course, whenever you feel that your context or your values change, you pivot, you change. Uh, you quit the goal, you get into something new. Um, so here are a few things that I want you to think about when you're making a goal specific decision. Think about comparison analysis. So you compare two things and you basically set a criteria. So for example, um, I want to, uh, as, as people and as professionals, we do tend to have a lot of goals and we can't do all of them at the same time. So what you do is that you prioritize. And how do you prioritize? You do comparison analysis by comparing two things that you think you can do both, but you know you won't get time. So you set a criteria that maybe which one is generating more impact or which one makes sense at this time in my career or in my life. And then you pick up the one that's most uh, you know, that's most relevant. Um, then the next thing is that I really, really want you to be aware of is herd mentality. 
to not get into that because people are doing something you don't have to do it because uh, everybody's setting goals you don't have to do it so um herd mentality is is kind of like you thinking like a mob and you do something because of emotional reasons and not logical reasons so you're not thinking about your own context uh, where you are in your life but you are just thinking about that this is something that because everybody's doing and I have the fear of missing out on, the, on that so I'm going to do that so don't do that your time is way too precious to get into something that you have not kind of thought about properly uh, some cost so um, that happens uh, especially with product managers because that's my profession that um, if we have spent a certain amount of time, effort, money into something, we'll see that, oh my God, I've already spent that. Might as well get done with it. Even though I know it's not working out, just on the hope that it will work out. So some cost is something that's already, you know, gone. You can't recover that. So if you have already spent a month on doing something and it did not work out and the experiment was not a success, just let it go. Do not follow through because you are going to spend more time into it and most probably no good result will come out of it of course learning will come out of it but again whatever you were thinking of whatever your goal was initially that this is what i'm going to get out of this habit this ritual this goal you know it doesn't it won't work then action bias so we tend to overvalue not overvalue but maybe we tend to favor action over inaction so we just want to do something to feel in control um think about that as well because you have limited energy and limited time just because you think that uh, you are not doing anything, you just find something to do. This is a problem that I also have. And I keep on um, trying to be mindful of that. And my family also reminds me that I overvalue action. And a lot of times that action is not uh, turning into something substantial. And I still go ahead with it. So think about this as well. And then last is confirmation bias. So we tend to un unintentionally, we find information that confirms our beliefs or our mindset. So if you want to pursue a goal or pursue a skill or pursue a career or whatever you want to pursue, you will tend to find information that confirms you all, what you already believe. Uh, most of the time we do it un uh, unintentionally, sometimes we do it intentionally. So you have to be mindful of that as well. So when we are doing goal specific decision making, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we are not sticking to something because of some cost, we are not doing it because others are doing it, uh, because we, we are not taking an action just because we want to feel in control. Um, and then, of course, we have to think about the impact on our health, on our happiness, on our financial state, on our life overall. And then comparison works, but make sure that your criteria is defined. You know why you are measuring th these two things and what you want to get out of it. And then, of course, you, you have to make sure that when you are uh, looking for evidence to prove what you were to already believe in, uh, look for the evidence that disprove what you believe in. And I think that is going to really help. So... Um, a few things, a few do's for you, create a master list. So I have a master list and ironically, it calls chaos. Um, I call it chaos because it has a lot of chaos in it. So many things that I want to do, so many things that, uh, you know, so many ideas that I have. So I have another sheet that I call a brain dump. And uh, that also have a lot of, you know, things that I think um, I would invest my, I would invest my time in, in the future. You create categories. So help, uh, so health, happiness, finance, spirituality, intellectual, um, you know, whatever, whatever is important to you. You prioritize either by, um, you know, uh, comparing two things or to see which one makes more sense in, uh, in your context. And of course, you also make sure that you don't overwhelm yourself. So you pick uh, four goals or five goals a year and not more than that. I, I would say just pick four goals a year, not more than that. So in my head, it should be all about symmetry. So there are four quarters, so four goals. This is what I have in mind. You set milestones. Okay. So milestones for every quarter so that you can measure it. Um, my milestones also include, uh, also include that I would say that if I have to do something daily and I have achieved five to seven times a week, that, that's a success. That's something that I want to do. I have achieved my goal 100%. So you can do that. Have a tracking, uh, get a bullet journal, uh, get, a, get a notebook. 
do that. You can also use a tool. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, technology in that sense. So of course, definitely. Uh, Pre-audit reviews, I do a quarterly review in most cases because I've been following this process for a long time. But in your case, maybe if you're starting new, you can do it a monthly review. Be very, very honest with yourself. If you don't enjoy something, if you don't like something, if something is not impactful, if you find it boring, uh, you know, be honest with yourself that I don't enjoy this. I don't enjoy it at all. So um, I went to um, I, I went to a class um, to basically learn uh, yoga and I don't I didn't enjoy it. For me, the most enjoyable physical activity is walk. I enjoy walking, I love walking. So this is something that I wanted to do. So joining a gym or going to, um, you know, uh, going to a yoga class did not work out for me. Uh, same goes for a lot of learning. So some sort of topics that I'm interested in, some top, sort, sort of topics that make me sleep. So be honest with yourself. And then, you know, of course, uh, if there are things that you have to do, but you don't enjoy them, again, you'll have to push through them. But at the same time, you have to be honest with yourself and watch out for your biases. So confirmation bias, action bias, um, you know, herd mentality, all of these biases, you need to be mindful of them. And then put things on the back burner. This is extremely important. So not have, if something is not happening right now, just put it on the back burner. Let, let your mind do, let your unconscious mind do its magic. And, um, and, and there's no shame in that. So, so do that, put things on the back, back burner. Um, don'ts, don't have conflicting goals. It's going to drive you nuts. I've done that. Uh, it doesn't work out. So don't have that. That is the reason that you don't have or don't want to have more goals because eventually they will conflict with each other. So do not have that. Um, don't overwhelm yourself. If you are starting new on this journey um, and you're really trying to find a system for yourself, maybe start with two goals. Maybe start with three goals, not more than that. Do not guilt or shame yourself if something doesn't work out. It's fine. It's your time. You have taken a decision. It did not work out. You have learned out of it. That's absolutely fine. Don't count on motivation. Count on your behavior. Count on habit triggers. We are going to talk about them later on. Be, uh, don't be inflexible. So if something doesn't happen at a certain time, don't get frustrated out of it. Life happens. You need to make time for life as well. So that happens. Do not separate your goals from your identity. So I'm also going to uh, touch upon that uh, later in the talk. Do not overly plan your schedule. Life happens, things will change, something unexpected will come. So do not overly plan your schedule. Make sure that you leave some time for, for the unexpected. Don't be afraid of taking, don't be scared of taking a break. So breaks are extremely important and you should definitely, definitely invest in rest. And don't seek for shortcuts. Um, in most cases, they don't work out, or if they even work out, they're temporary. So uh, think about, think long term, think about something that uh, creates a system for you, creates a behavior for you that becomes part of your personality. Um, so the most important thing you have to do is optimize your environment. In my case, I, for being uh, my most productive self, for being able to think about personal growth, I need a clutter free environment. I also need an environment that induces peace. I also need an environment where there are not a lot of people around me because I'm an introvert with social anxiety. So it makes me anxious if there are a lot of people around me. So, so I'm, I've optimized my environment in that way. I also have a different place for work and a different place for rest or family or personal life. So you can do that as well. Um, most of the days I'm, um, so half of my day I'm working from here, my office, and other half I'm working from my home office. So um, I'm fortunate enough to have this, I'm privileged enough to have a separate space to make my home office, a separate room, uh, but do that. If not, you know, create some kind of partition between your personal and personal and workspace so that you know that when you are here, you're working when you're here, you're not working, you're resting or you're doing anything else. Um, then of course you set habit triggers for me. So when every morning I get up, the first thing I do is that I will, you know, clean up and then I will go and make tea. And while I'm making tea, I'm basically planning my day in my head. I'm checking Asana app to see what my, what I have in, you know, what I have in my uh, intention for the day. And then I'm also going to, um, 
do a few little things. I, I take medication for anxiety. So I know where my medication is so that I don't forget it. I also have triggers in, in the workspace I have. So every morning when I come in, I turn my laptop on. And the first thing I do is I go and get my water bottle filled. So you set small triggers to um, initiate behavior. And you are basically um, making space for other things in your head by not consciously thinking about them. I put my uh, walking or running shoes outside if, uh, the days that I have to go go for that to make sure that I don't have to think about it. I know the shoes are there. That's my day. That's my cue to do that. Um, the next thing you have to do is minimize decision making. Um, decision fatigue, it gets all of us. So um, you have to do that by simplifying your life. In my case, I do a lot of meal prepping. So Sunday morning, you come to my house and you see that, you know, it's chaos of cooking because I'm cooking for the whole week. Um, I invest a lot of time in my um, in, in making sure that during the week, during the work week, I do not get an, anything, you know, happening weirdly around the household. So whatever is required happens on the uh, on the weekend. I also uh, plan my week. So I have a weekly to do in my notebook and I also have my day's intention planned. So I have a plan for like for, for the next two, three months in my um, Asana app. I use that. I use technology to make sure that I'm on, I'm on track. Um, also, um, you need to decide uh, your day ahead. So when it comes to clothing, when it comes to other things, you do that to make sure that you don't get tired of thinking about smaller, smaller things, things that do not have a lot of impact on your life. Um, then you focus on system. So you create productive rituals and habits to make sure that the system is in place. So you become, it's not you being productive for a day. It's about you being a productive person. So uh, make sure that you focus on the system of that. So once you have your own, like I have my system in place, so it becomes easier for me to kind of tweak it every year, every quarter, and then, you know, do it for other things. So focus on building a system for yourself. Uh, and then make use of technology, whatever works for you. To-do list, create a to-do list, create a tool, calendar block. Um, you can use focus apps. You can do whatever you want to do. Make use of technology to make sure that you, know, you are being productive. Uh, I do not like uh, notifications on my phone. I Mostly my phone is silent and it's upside down on a drawer or in a table. I check it when I want to check it. I usually keep it disconnected from the internet as well because I do not want to be disturbed when I'm in that zone of working. So, um, so I do that. I, I, I have disabled all the notifications on my phone until unless someone calls me on my phone. So, so you do that. You, you basically uh, kind of don't be slave of technology, but make it you know something that that's useful for you. So you tweak that thing for your own context and. There are a few things to consider that I really want you to consider is to think about deep versus shallow work. This is an excellent book. I've added it at the end of my talk. When you're working, so in my case, I do a lot of writing, a lot of thinking, a lot of strategy work, a lot of research. I know that I cannot do it, do that kind of work for more than for more than three or four hours in a day. I do not have the capacity to focus that much. So I know that I need to optimize that time to find that kind of schedule in my day where I'm doing that deep work without any interaction, without any sort of interruption, sorry. And then shallow work is a work that we are doing while mostly in meetings, mostly responding to emails, mostly uh, taking a call while cooking, you know, things we do when, when we can multi multitask as well, listening to a podcast, cleaning our home, listening to a podcast while responding to an email, stuff like that. So, so think about deep and shallow work. And see if your goals fall into a shallow kind of work or a deep kind of work, and then decide or schedule your day. Then, of course, invest in rest. I need to remind myself this again and again and again, that I need to invest in rest because burnouts are nasty and you don't want to get into that. You will get into that eventually, but you know it happens to everyone once in a while. Uh, for some people, it's rare. For some people, it's 
pretty, pretty, uh, you know, often in my case, it's often. Uh, so I need to remind myself to invest in rest. Um, I, I'm learning this and I want you to learn this as well. Um, and then run it like an experiment. If it doesn't work, that's fine. You have learned something. Go ahead and do something completely different. Um, I also tend to alternate between different types of goals. So some years, the theme is about learning. So this is my year of learning. Uh, past year, it was um, the year of financial stability. So I did a lot of work to make sure that I'm financially stable and I have uh, a savings account and I have some money for emergencies and I built an emergency fund and stuff like that. So this is what I did last year. This year's theme is learning. So I've done a lot of learning. I've taken a lot of classes. I've taken a lot of courses. So I experiment every year to find the things that I enjoy. Last year, I did not enjoy what I was doing, uh, but I did it anyway because I know that that was really, really important. The impact of it on my uh, life and on my well-being and on my health was huge. Uh, this year, it's learning. I'm, I'm having the time of my life with that. And then, of course, make it your identity. Instead of you like to read, I like to read, you are a reader. Instead of I like to run, I'm a runner. Instead of um, I want to be, I like to be productive, I'm a productive person. Make it your identity. That really helps. It centers the, it centers everything. It makes you, uh, makes you, uh, makes you want to do it more. It makes you want to believe it more. So make it part of your identity. And then whatever you are doing, record your findings. My notebook is just a mess of things that I keep on writing about, uh, writing about the things that I'm doing. So how am I feeling? What is the impact of it? What was the context? What did I learn? Do I want to do it again? Do I not want to do it again? Do I want to give it another try? So record your findings. A few lines every day. Either you want to do um, some kind of Exercise like morning pages, a lot of people do that. Some people journal every day. Um, I, I don't, I, I do not um, do that. I don't do some kind of journaling every day, but I do write about my goals uh, because I want to record, record my findings of whatever the experiments that I've run um, in that time. And of course, these are five wonderful books that you should read. Atomic Habit, uh, Drive, Daily Rituals, Peak Performance, and Deep Work. Um, these are excellent books. You will really enjoy them. I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. If, you are, if you're listening to this talk and you're interested in learning about uh, productivity and personal growth. And um, thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. Um... Fahza, for, for opening up and taking us through the journey of how you have um, planned, tracked, uh, and also um, not beaten yourself for, for things. And I'm so glad. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, I'm just looking at um, the chat. Uh, there aren't any questions there. Let me also open up the question and answers. Um, there aren't any questions that uh, I'm seeing as of now. Uh, I would request for the pro, uh, folks who are participating, um, if they have any questions, they can put it here. Um, also note that um, uh, we'll be at a hangout area, post this uh, um, discussion. So you can come there as well and uh, talk to uh, Faiza one on one as well, yeah. So I'll just uh, wait for um, any questions or anything. Yeah, oh, okay, there's a question now. It's, uh, it's from an anonymous uh, attendee. Um, how do I come out of laziness and uh, concentrate on goals? <laughs> That's the question. Okay, so I wouldn't call anyone a lazy person until or unless they just do not do anything at all in their day. Uh, a lot of times we tend to procrastinate. Uh, I do that too. Everybody does it. Um, I think in, in any case, you should, in my case, I do not look for shortcuts, but I would love to find some kind of low hanging fruit for myself uh, to motivate myself. So I think in your case, whatever you enjoy doing, whatever you like doing, you don't have to think about something, a, a massive goal. Like I told you about my financial goal last year, it was a massive thing to do, like opening up a savings account and doing this and doing that and talking, hiring a tax consultant and an accountant and a million other things. Do not start with something huge. Start with something very, very small, something that you really enjoy doing and then see what happens. Um, usually it's 
usually we feel that kind of inertia that it takes us a while to get into the you know groove of things but once you are in that in that zone it's going to really help and um, if you're starting on this journey start with two goals one is about your happiness and another is about your health uh, that will be really really helpful for you um, so you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very open about a lot of topics. One of the topics that is really close to my heart is mental health. So in, in this series of my goal, I wanted to go to therapy six times a year. And uh, I've done that this year. That was one of the goals. Very simple. Schedule an appointment, go to therapy every alternate month. And that's it. That's the goal. So you have to find something. And it's extremely important for me because I'm an anxiety prone person to go and talk to someone. So um, and do that. Find something that is easy. Find something that is a low-hanging fruit and go ahead with that. Thank you, Faisal. There are more questions coming up. Uh, Parul uh, Bhargava is asking, um, what do you, uh, what do you uh, mean? Okay, I don't know. Uh, what do you mean by keeping, mean I think is the word, uh, by keeping things in back burner? Could you give us some examples? Yeah, that, that's a very good question. So, um, so what I do in most cases that um, I do not jump on things as they come to me. So in most cases, you see that an idea comes to you and you get really excited about it. And you just, even without thinking about the time that it will take or what's going to be the end goal or the impact of it, we just jump on that idea. Uh, that's not how uh, I, I over the years I've learned to function in a different way. So if an idea comes to me, I'm going to think about it, write about it, put it on the back burner till I'm absolutely sure that this is something that I want to do. So this is how I do not have a lot of unfinished projects. So if I've started something, I, I'm mindful about my time. I'm mindful about the thing that I'm going to finish it. So if you have ideas about your goals, about learning, about skill, about improving something, write them down, definitely write them down, write them, write, write your thought process behind it and let it sit there, let it sit there for a while. So my, as my dad would say, sleep on it for a while and you will know if it's worth doing or not. So you put it on the back burner and then you eventually figure it out that this is something that I really want to do. So um, I, I something that I mentioned about a financial goal or a learning goal. So for this year, I had like a whole list of things that I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn um, specifically, specifically uh, South Indian cooking because my daddy was from there. I wanted to learn Mexican cooking. So I did that. I recently completed a course on that. I, but again, this is not related to work. This is not related to product management or technology, but I wanted to make sure that I do that. So this idea was in my head for three years, but I wanted to find the right time to do that. So rather than jumping directly on spending money on a very expensive class on on that I would just put it on the back burner, let it simmer there, and then put it up back up when, when I think the time is right. Thank you for that, Faisal. We, uh, we have more questions going in, uh, and we have about 12 minutes to go through. Uh, so I'll quickly go to the next one. Uh, it's by uh, an anonymous attendee. How do you handle too many meetings in a day? Uh, that's a problem. That's a problem everywhere, especially when remote work. Um, so in my case, if there is a listening meeting, uh, I make sure that I have just two of them. If a meeting that I have to contribute to and I have to talk, then, uh, then one meeting a day. That's how I do usually, but there are days when it doesn't work out. Um, so on meetings day, I make sure that I do not plan any kind of deep or creative work. And I do tend to kind of move the schedule around because as I told you that time blocking is not something that I can do because of the chaos around me all the time. So what I tend to do is I, if there are days in the week that are meeting days. So today is my meeting day because I'm meeting the content part of the team and I'm meeting my product team and I'm meeting, I'm, I'm here right now as well. So I do not have a lot of, uh, you know, creative or a lot of uh, deep work planned for the day. Uh, because if I do that, I'm, I'm going to be really tired and I won't be able to give my 100%. Uh, and also in cases, in cases where you, where you can so, say no to a meeting and just instead write an email to that, go ahead and do that. I'm, I'm, I'm infamous for writing long emails. So go ahead. Thanks for that. Moving on to the next question. Uh, it's again anonymous. Uh, I have a problem of procrastination. I tend to avoid the major work 
and do the not important work. I do other things faster. How can I get over it? Is the question. Yeah. Um, I usually set internal deadlines for making sure that I don't do that. Interestingly, when you procrastinate and you're doing other things, your mind is still thinking about the main work that you want to do. So in a lot of cases, you will see that when the deadline will approach, you will become extra productive and get it done. You know, so in that case, set internal deadlines for you. And um, so f- from the beginning, I am the kind of a person who would study at the last time. And uh, my my mom used to get very mad about it. My husband tells me that he hates people like me because we do everything at the last moment and we do it well. So um, again, there are a few, few people like this, that this thing works for them because in their mind, again, the thing is on the back burner. They, they're constantly thinking about it while doing other things. And when they sit down, they know what they have to do. Uh, what I do is that I break it down. I, I'm going to spend, for example, I have a major goal. So currently I have around in my list today, I have to review a very major document that's going to go to a client. I have a whole week for it. I'm going to do a few pages every day. And this is what I do to make sure that, you know, I don't just overwhelm myself. Um, Procrastination is not a bad thing until or unless it starts affecting your life. So don't kind of uh, guilt trip yourself on that. Everybody does that. There's no person in the whole world that doesn't procrastinate. Uh, But you need to set internal deadlines to make sure that that you do things on on time and put it on your schedule. So put it on on your to-do for the list. If you're writing it by hand, if you're putting it on the fridge, if you're putting it on your sticky note on your table, do it. Put it there. Yes, thank you for that. Uh, Another uh, anonymous question. Uh, What would be our strategy if a goal setting keeps failing continuously? Uh, due to a tough work schedule. How do we keep ourselves motivated is the next question. Hmm. Um, yeah, this also happens, especially with tech technology jobs, because we ha- we tend to have very crazy schedules and the work pressure is a lot. And in most cases, people don't have the energy to do anything else um, after work. Uh, give yourself a break. Don't, don't push yourself. Give yourself a break. You're going to burn out otherwise. And again, start with one thing, just one goal that you have fixed for the whole year, that this is one thing that I'm going to do the whole year. That's it. That's my goal. Other than taking care of my family, other than you know, working or going to my nine to five or whatever job that I do, this is one thing that I'm going to do for myself. And then you do it and make sure that you understand the impact of that thing. So it should not be watching Netflix. It should not be just sitting on the couch. It should not be something completely random, but something with a purpose. Um, so maybe going for a walk for 20 minutes. This is something that I want to do to clear my head after a busy day at work. Um, one thing that you want to do that improves your life and start from there. Once you will start seeing the results of that, you will be really motivated to do that. And also also start thinking about your, um, about your daily work. If there is any way that you can automate some of it, if there is any way that you can, um, uh, you know, uh, delegate some of it, or if you can simplify some of the work, uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, that is also really important, especially in the kind of work that we do. A lot of meetings, a lot of communication. See ways to optimize that and and find your you know zone where you work the best. Thank you, Pez. I think uh, there was there was uh, another question which was almost related to that. Again, it is anonymous. It was talking about how to avoid procrastination while working from home. I think you did answer that before. Uh, and also there was another question um, that how do we then deal with goals when we're too tired? And I think you mentioned go take a break. Um, yeah. That can protect what you have to do. Yeah. Moving on uh, to another question. Um, we have a few more, two more to go. Um, uh, bad habit of thinking a lot before taking any actions. And uh, sometimes I miss the time for the activity. How do we improve? Is the question. Yeah, that's analysis paralysis that also happens that you keep on thinking about it. So you this is again, uh, this is not something life altering, right? If, if you're thinking too much about it, do you think it's a big enough decision that you're spending so much time thinking about it? In most cases, just run it, run it like an experiment. Okay, I'm going to try this if it works out well enough, if it doesn't work out well enough. So um, I think that is required. A lot of times we overthink because we are scared of 
not enjoying it or scared of not being able to uh, do it well um if you don't do it well that is also fine it's a goal a goal this kind of goal is a commitment between you and yourself there's no one else you don't have to publicly announce it you don't have to put it out on social media you don't have to tell your family it's it's a commitment with yourself if it doesn't work out that is fine don't uh, you know shame yourself or guilt yourself and in most cases um when we are overthinking something a lot and excessively this is something that we think will going to impact our life positively but it doesn't because there is a part of our mind telling us that i don't think that's worth my time should i think it through should i think more about it so do that run it give yourself 3 days i'm going to do it for 3 days and see what happens i'm going to do it for a week and see what happens and then see if and and i've i've done that as well so when when you go to shopping you try things on to see if they fit you so in 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 cases of goals i've also done that so i've tried something and see that um for example when i started doing on a lot of online learning and online teaching i started with one class to see if it is something that i enjoy and i really enjoyed it i went ahead with it but there are things that i don't enjoy and then i pull myself back out of it that this is not something that that's worth my time because there is so much resistance from who i am as a person that it's not worth it thank you thank you for that asa moving on to the next question again is anonymous uh, how can one develop a mindset that keeps identifying and addressing their subconscious biases that's also very tricky and it's an excellent question um you reminding yourself that we are all inherently biased and when you are taking a decision in your in, you should have a checklist in your head that i have uh, checked my decision for these biases um my, in my case action bias and confirmation bias are the are going to be the death of me because in most cases i will just choose to jump on something without thinking it through that that's a problem that i also have so when i'm taking a decision i remind myself that am i doing it because i just want to do something or i really i think that's that's going to be useful and the second is that um you you think about uh, the data that you have gathered for making that decision are you just looking for data that confirms what you have already uh, thought or believe on uh, so in most cases i will basically find a person who would say that that's a terrible idea faiza don't do that and then the conversation will start from there what they have to say about it or i will you know start looking for data that disproves what i have in mind and then uh, this will open you up for uh, uh, for better thinking so in in that case um, create a checklist for yourself on on paper maybe that every time i take a decision these are the four things that i'm going to kind of recheck in my head to make sure that i'm i'm doing the right thing yeah yeah thank you for that fiza last question and i am <laughs> conscious that we just have three more minutes um if you don't have a separate place to work and kids constantly disturb you because they are too small how can you manage it oh boy i don't have kids so uh, my answer won't be a good a good answer for this uh but that's a problem that is a problem especially when working from home um in my household we are just three adults so um, i i don't face that but this this happens um i what i have seen a lot of women around me doing is that um the, they basically kind of take their kids in confidence in a lot of cases that this is you know your mom or your dad is working right now and i'll need this time and then you know um after that i've also seen people scheduling their time around their kids schedule so you know when they are at school or at daycare or this and that so maybe that helps um i i'm i'm really not sure about about this because uh, i don't have any experience in this sorry about that thank you thank you for for being uh... honest with that thank you faiza so that's all the question that we had guys thank you so much for asking this question faiza for for accommodating all of them